in section 1.6, we're going to take a look at the equilibrium solutions for autonomous differential equations and put them to good use. Specifically, if you remember, an autonomous differential equation is one that has a very special feature, which is the right-hand side depends only on the dependent variables. That is to say, the derivative, dy dt, only depends on y. So wherever you are in the vertical direction, in the y direction, or the height on your uh, plane, determines entirely the slope of the solution curve. So if you want to know the slope of the solution curve, all you have to do is report what the height is, and that'll give it to you. And that means that if you're looking at, uh, at an autonomous differential equation, if you're looking <coughs> along the same horizontal line, you're going to see the same slope value. And so if you remember from pre-calculus, curves might have something that we'd call a horizontal asymptote. Right? So the graph of 1 over x has a horizontal asymptote. The analog for slope fields is not an asymptote. It's what we're calling these uh, equilibrium solutions. So slope fields have equilibrium solutions. around which the slopes tend toward or away from zero. And so we're going to take a look at an example of this, and it'll be a familiar example. We just got done talking about this guy in section 1.5. So if we take a look at the familiar uh, ordinary differential equation, you can see what's going on. If you remember, this differential equation has two equilibrium solutions, one of them over here at y equals negative 1, the other one we said was here at y equals 2. And we can see these on the slope field, right? One of them right here, and that's what we call the y equals 2 equilibrium solution and the, the other one down here we called the y equals negative 1 equilibrium solution. And the nice thing about the slope field is it shows us that if you're above y equals 2 then the derivative dy dt, the slope, everywhere up here is positive, or I should say greater than 0. And if you're in between the two equilibrium solutions the slope everywhere is less than 0. And if you're below that bottom um, equilibrium solution, then the slope is positive. And the nice thing about this is you can verify that by plugging in values. If you plug in a value larger than 2 into the equation, this would be a positive number, and so would this. Positive times a positive means the slope is positive. If you plugged in a number in this region, you'd have a negative times a positive, and that's where you get the negative from. And anywhere down here, anywhere a y value below negative 1, you'd have a negative times a negative, which would give you positive again. And so you can tell by looking at the equation that this thing is an autonomous differential equation, right, because of how the right-hand side behaves. But you can also tell by looking at the slope field that this is autonomous. And really what it boils down to is, whether you're looking at the equation or the slope field, the y-coordinate of any location determines the slope of the solution curve. through that location. So what we're saying is, thanks to the existence and uniqueness theorem, we know that there's only one curve that goes through each individual point. And because we know it's autonomous, we know that the slope is completely determined by whatever the y-coordinate is of that point, and, and, or any point for that matter. 
But of course that means that you don't really care about what's going on horizontally. So if you were to look at a uh, horizontal line on this graph here, or maybe one here, or one down here, it wouldn't matter where horizontally you look. Every single place across that horizontal line is going to have the exact same slope. The slope doesn't care about your t-coordinate. It only cares about the y-coordinate. And so down at the bottom it says there's redundant information on the slope field, and that redundant information is your horizontal position. In other words, it doesn't matter where you are, it's completely, um, uh, it, it's completely up to what the y-coordinate is. And so if we take a look on the next page, what we're going to do is use this information to create what's called a phase line. And a phase line is really just a fancy way of saying, I'm going to condense all the information of the plane onto one line. So a phase line condenses the plane into a line. And we're going to do that by taking a look at the equilibrium <clears throat> Uh, solutions for our differential equation. And if you remember, we had two of them. We called this one y equals 2 and this one y equals 1, or excuse me, negative 1. Now we're just going to refer to these with a little subscript to make it easier to tell them apart. So we'll call this one y1 and this one y2. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a phase line. And in order to do that, we're going to kind of follow some steps. And the first step is draw a vertical line. And it's got to be a vertical line because we're condensing the information horizontally down into a single vertical line. And I've already got one drawn off to the side on this page. And so that's our vertical line that we're drawing. So step two says, okay, you got your vertical line. What you need to do is plot those equilibrium solutions as points on the line. And so we're going to plot those points, but we're also going to label them. So I'm going to take that information that we have on our um, slope field and say, OK, so at this height, there's an equilibrium solution. So I'm going to make a point that's at that height. And I'm going to call it y1 equals 2. And then there's another one down here. And I'll call this one y2 equals negative 1. So we plotted our points as solutions, or excuse me, we plotted our equilibrium solutions as points on the line. Step 3 in this process is to draw arrow segments. Um, arrow, I guess directions would be a better word here. Draw arrow directions on the line to show slope directions. There we go. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is, if you take a look anywhere above y equals 2, the slopes are all positive. So we're going to draw an up arrow head above y equals 2. Now notice, I didn't put it on the end. You never draw arrow heads on the end of the lines. Right? The ends of the lines aren't supposed to get the arrow heads. In between these two equilibrium solutions, the slope values are negative. So I draw a down arrow there. And then below y equals negative 1, we have positive slopes again. And so we've got our phase line drawn with arrows showing the direction. Now keep in mind, all that we're doing is compressing all this information into a single line. So we can see every slope below y equals negative 1 is a positive slope. It doesn't mean we know how quickly they head towards this equilibrium solution. It just means they definitely head towards that equilibrium solution. And that takes us to our last step, the last thing we need to do in order to create our phase line. We have to classify all equilibrium solutions. And they get classified as one of three ways. They can either be a source a sink, or what we're going to call a node. 
and as you might guess, source means everything's kind of heading out from it. If you imagine like the, the fountain, the water fountain, everything kind of whoosh, heads out away from it. A sink is kind of like a drain. Everything heads towards it. And then a node is, well, it's not a sink and it's not a source. So let's see what's going on over here if we have to classify this. If we take a look at this equilibrium solution, this equilibrium point, everything around it is heading away from it. And so that qualifies it as a source. Because, you know, we've got an up arrow above and a down arrow below. So Y1 is what we would call a source. You can see it on the, um, the slope field because everything above is heading away, everything below is heading away. And this guy right here, for the exact opposite reason, is what we would call a sink, because everything is headed towards it. Above, things are headed towards it. Below, things are headed up towards it. And so it's a sink. So sources are things that have arrows moving away from it. Sinks are things that have arrows moving towards it. And nodes are either this or this. Nodes are, well, above it behaves one way, below it behaves another. So those are the steps for classifying and creating a phase line, right? You got to do all four. It's got to be a vertical line. You got to plot those equilibrium points, label them, and classify them, and draw your arrows, of course. And so down at the bottom, it's just a reminder, don't forget, phase lines are drawn vertically. So we were able to do this because we had a phase, or say phase, we had a, a slope field, and we were able to use this information to create those arrows. But we could have, if we wanted to, taken a look at the original differential equation and said, hey, if these are the places where the slope is equal to zero, then what's going on in between them, what's going on above two, and what's going on below negative one, we could set up and an interval and test and test with values. We don't actually need the slope field to be able to create the phase line, but it does definitely does help. And remember, of course, you can get Maple to do um, or to create that slope field for you. One thing that Maple doesn't do, Maple does not create phase lines. Phase lines are going to be something that we have to make, but Maple cannot make them for us. The best it can do is give you a slope field that you can use to understand. So what we're going to do next is take a look at a different situation where we just have an equation, but we have to make a phase line. So tune in for the next video on that one.